Ready to roll. Hope you're tied on as we get opening week. Opening Friday underway, an eight race Friday afternoon here at the old GPW. It is Gulfstream Park West. Ron Nicoletti, Jason Blewett alongside. Good to have you with us here from our studios at GPW as we have another eight race card on tap, Ronnie. And of course, I think the big news is it's round two of the Stronic Five. Yeah, the Stronic Five, and we have the second leg in the Stronic Five right here at Gulfstream Park West. So uh, a very a nice day to do it. We got a fast and a fast track and a firm turf course. And and uh, carryover starting to build in the Rainbow Six. Should be a fun day and weekend here. Yeah, maybe the biggest news of all, aside from the Stronic Five, is we're back on the turf. We had some intermittent rain throughout the Thursday program. We ended, of course, off the turf in a, a sloppy sealed track, but what a difference a day makes here in South Florida. And that'll be the uh, track condition on both sides of the rail, if you will, fast and firm as we settle in for the first of eight at about 1.20 p.m. And a little rundown as to what's on tap. Ron he touched upon the Rainbow Six starting to build slowly but surely. Well, it all begins with race number one in that opening super high five at about 20 after one. Of course, that includes the 50 cent early pick five and an early bird Rainbow Six, Ronnie, on this eight race Friday gets underway in the third. Yeah, third race. And as I mentioned, starting to build and uh, been paying pretty nicely if you can get that six out of six. So we'll see how it plays out this afternoon. And of course, we end the day with that final pick five of the afternoon. Jason will have another one of his uh, tickets. I got a good feeling Jason's going to have a winner today in either the early or the late or both. I'm, I'm hoping it's both, my friend, as that late five gets underway in race four. And just note, this is day three of 40, Friday number one, if you will, at Gulfstream Park West. We are running through. It's a six-day live racing week, just as a friendly reminder. We're running Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, Columbus Day. So do note there is live racing at Gulfstream West this coming Monday. Um, what is that, October 8th, right? Yeah. Eight. I just that. finished Sunday's <laughs> analysis, October right. 7th, Monday, October 8th. We do have that special Columbus Day card, and let's try to get lucky in this early pick five that sees me. And we begin, by the way, on the uh, main track, and uh, Jaime Mejia has been on a pretty good run. And this first race, unless one of these firsters can run a bit or somebody really takes a step forward, this is, by a long ways, hard bells race to lose. I see you have that horse on top, too. Yeah, I mean, he looks like certainly the one to beat with the previous experience uh, against this uh, $50,000 maiden. So unless one of the first is, as you said, runs well, looks like the one to beat. So happy to hear. And we've only had, again, two cards so far at Gulfstream West. But the tagline is, for the second, happy to be back on the Gulfstream Park West turf because the grass course here, which was renovated and really worked on in the 10 months that passed, uh, from when we last ran at GPW. Received rave reviews from some of the uh, top riders here in the colony. We're back on the green stuff today. Three deep in race number three and a home field advantage here in Miami Gardens for uh, both horses going out for Antonio Sano, who are on the ticket along with trainer Kathleen O'Connell. And then one seven for me in race number four, Dynamic Dancer, Ronnie. It looks like at 0 for 19, he could be as low as, say, Three to five in that race. It is his race to lose by a long margin. I believe he's seven to five in the morning line. You don't usually see that with a zero for 19 horse. I got him on top of the ticket with Toss, and I also used, uh, split your other horse, Kid Ken Thoros, with Toss. So. And, and uh, I'll tell you, coming off, not to cut you off, if mm -hmm. Cyrus in the back end in the fifth runs back to his last race on the 3rd of September in the slop. He's probably going to prove best at a pretty short price. Did you take him on top there? Yeah, I did not take him on top, and I thought he was the one to beat, so we'll see how that plays out. So, a good ticket here, and what do you got? 12 bucks, very, 12 very bucks. affordable. Got yeah. a couple of shorties here in the uh, sequence. Uh, some favorites that win or lose are just very legitimate and tough to go against, if you will, on paper. And that certainly includes the presence of the five hard bell in race number one, who, when it comes down to it, off his last couple of races, both in special weight company but he, he runs back to that those races, and nobody takes a step forward. He's going to win this race. And he's a half-brother to a million-dollar earner called Not Bourbon, dropping to this level, as you mentioned. He went up, set the pace. He finished fourth. That was against much better than he's going to face today. So he's got that ex pre previous experience and certainly looks like the one to beat. I put a couple of the first-time starter, one first-time starter underneath with Forever Touch, who I think is a debut for Ron Spatch. What I like about this horse, Lasix, and I like the fact that MCL Jaramillo is in the saddle today. 
that bombed pretty good with their two-year-old runners. They average around 25% just with those things. So I just thought Forever Touch might be a logical contender in there. All right, new stallion in uh, Atreides, who was a good one for yeah. Marty Wolfson. Right. Yeah, his career was cut short. He had a lot of talent. I can remember being up in the Big Apple and hearing the buzz and hype that surrounded that horse, who was pretty good for a short amount of time. The other key first during the race might just be the seven Malibu Illusion on the outside, who is by Malibu Moon. It didn't bring all that much money as a New York bred yearling debuting for Jenna Antonucci. And in fact, speaking of Jenna, you've got Jenna right on top here as she runs a drop down in the number four Earth in Friday's second race as we head to the turf for the first time on this October 5th. Field of five, going five on the grass in this three and up $16,000 claiming race in which to me, very much a two horse affair with that scratch of Puerto Rican style, the deuce, Flying Liberty, the off the pace runner against Earth who takes the big drop. Yeah, Earth is dropping to the 16th level on the lawn after following that third place finish. That was against 25 optional claimers on the Gulfstream turf. Comes back, stalks, fades, but that was behind a repeat winner called American Power, and that was in a $40,000 claimer contested at three quarters on the Saratoga main track. So I think going back to the turf, we mentioned Jenna. Sammy Camacho, I believe, is uh, tied for the lead here with three wins uh, early on in the meet, so he certainly adds to the appeal. Drop down, surface switch, that's where I went, but Flying Liberty has got a big shot. Here. He does, because he was beaten, quite frankly, in a race we'll bring you and show you back and a while ago. We get that on June 29th, but nonetheless, he was beaten by a horse, and we've got, of course, Flying Liberty highlighted from the back of the pack while his stablemate for Victor Barboza Jr. in the yellow and red is setting the pace down on the inside in Grand Malbec. To date, Grand Malbec has not lost a race. He's won five consecutive turf sprints, and I gave some extra credit, good trip aside, and he was able to close up the inside and didn't have to go wide or anything. But a reprise of this 74 buyer, assuming Earth just doesn't run out of his mind here, dipping for 16, you've got a likely winner in Flying Liberty. Yeah, just really nice when you get back, go back and see that performance. That was a good race from Flying Liberty. The other horse I used on my ticket, and you have in third, is Gone Fishing. He's uh, he's got getting some class relief. He stalked the pace. He weakened to finish fourth behind uh, Grand Malbec, who you just mentioned in that 30 condition claimer at the distance. Want to show your stat? I'm uh, Mr. Joe Orsino with Gone Fishing. Turf Sprint is claiming all levels of big sampling. I went back 29 of 204, 14%, 37% in the money and a dollar 81 re return investment and that's pretty solid when you're talking about 204 horses so just thought i'd pass that out there but i think the race goes through either earth who i have on top of flying liberty and you and i maybe we'll go fishing all right sounds good my <laughs> friend after the races of course on this friday here in miami gardens i can tell you what we will be taking a little time out together along with all of you but get tied on again as we come back with ronnie's rainbow six Whether you're at home or at the track, have a stake in the race when you bet with ExpressBet. Sign up for an ExpressBet online betting account and receive up to a $500 sign-up bonus. Well, we're set for week number two of the Stronic Five, a new month. It's Friday, October 5th. With round number two of the Stronic Five, the bet paid really well last weekend. In fact, just under $10,000. We've got an all-star ticket. We put together, well, some numbers from the brightest minds here at the Stronic Group. And we've got $72 worth of plays beginning with leg number one Friday afternoon in the Stronic Five. That is race three out there at Santa Anita. And in the end, we go full circle, wrapping it up at Santa Anita with the fifth. We're off and running. It's the Stronic Five. Best of luck. No, pumped up and really love the Stronic Five. It paid more than twice, more than double the win parlay last week at just under $10,000. 14 lucky winners as Ronnie and Jason welcome you back to this live Friday edition of Gulfstream Park West today. And there's a lot to uh, be looked at and studied, my friend, which I'm happy to report. We do have those free Stronic Five past performances available at GulfstreamPark.com. Yeah, and it's a pretty exciting sequence because you got the first race starting at Santa Anita. It's on the dirt. The rest are all 
on the turf. And there you see it starts at uh, Santa Anita race three at 5.03 p.m. We're second up here at Coldstream Park West uh, with about 5.10 p.m. 59 entries prior to scratches scattered throughout this lineup in the Stronic Five. And needless to say, one of the real selling points and appeals of this wager, aside from the fact that it is just basically five races in about an hour. So you do get that action, action, action. It's a 12% takeout, and that matters. And I think we saw that front and center with how well it paid here last week. Again, the win parlay, about 4,600 bucks, but you got just under 10 Gs if, again, you had all five winners, which was pretty, pretty tough at a tall <laughs> order and I'll tell you man this week might be even a little more difficult given the field sizes and a couple of barn burners up in up in uh, Maryland at Laurel Park. I'm curious to see what you got brewing here in your Stronic Five. Well, let's show you my ticket here. And it was just, I, I went too deep here with that first race in Santa Anita with the number six at Twitterati and then and the number nine queen of the track. I thought they were logical too. Well, the horses we're using here, of course. I went three deep in this race, so wide open here in Gulfstream Park West. I used Spice Drum Punch, Feature Creature, and the two horse of first time starter. And those races at Laura were just oh. so hard. I, I just went with horses I knew and have run well in the past and just did well. And then Santa Anita I closed it out with the two and four. And I think those are the logical two horses. So $72 for me. I wish I can go deeper, but I want to keep it where I can actually afford it. Right. And that's the 72 bucks will be coming out of my pocket. Yeah, I quickly learned after the sequence completed uh, last week, and we'll bring up my ticket as well as we chase that guaranteed 50K minimum pool. And by the way, they were betting with both fists. I think everybody pretty happy, including upper management with uh, about 160000 in the pool last Friday. Hopefully we get an even bigger pool, but you got to get in if you want to take advantage of the 12% takeout. I've got a single right off the bat in Imperial Creed, the drop down for a Todd Pletcher assistant out in Southern Cali in trainer Mike McCarthy. And I've got some coverage in the supporting, supporting legs, including a real skull buster in the Gulfstream Park West finale. My original point, though, Ronnie, I'm thinking maybe you and I might combine our plays <laughs> yeah. and you might get a little more bang for your buck if you can get a few buddies together, throw up a couple of bucks and maybe have one main ticket and a couple of backup tickets because I mean these races we're not this is not hyperbole the this is a very difficult puzzle my friend it really is and it's going to be great to see and you're you're going to know right away how you're doing in Santa Anita's first <laughs> leg with the three horse so it's great I, I love the fact that everybody's all over the board with these because you handicap them you take your best shot and maybe you and I will get together and talk about this and add on I didn't use the three in the Santa Anita so I have to find something there to use. absolutely so you're too deep there I've got the single so that gives us three horses to start but again that might be the play if you're more of a budget-minded player to get a few friends together and put together a ticket uh, one for all and all for one and uh, I may actually fund your action since we're on this big camaraderie kick here <laughs> on uh, Gulfstream Park West today I may fund your action here in the Rainbow Six what well, do we got well let's show you my ticket here this afternoon $38.40 stepped it up I couldn't find that single I went three deep in here with the four five and a seven and then in race number four my uh, long shot today not much of a long shot five to one on the board and that's Royalty Salvatore who I think is going to turn back to seven furlongs and might be the controlling speed in that race trying to figure out how this Track is going to play this afternoon. And you see, I went four deep in race seven. Of the five horses, Chris, there's a scratch in here. I used four of them, two, three, five, and six. So probably the four will win. But hmm. I just thought that was a logical way to go. I love that race. I found it very hard. And, of course, I have the one in four in race eight. And those are the two horses of the three that I used on the Stronic Five ticket. Guesswork in a real nightcap scramble. Two-year-olds on the turf. Turf that might be on the good side of firm. And a race that just has no prior turf form. I think two, and it's a bulky size field. Only two horses have tried the turf. None have really factored in at crunch time. So sit tight for our uh, opinions on race number eight, the Stronach five race as well, leg number two. But again, the rainbow all begins with this upcoming third race here at Gulfstream West, a two lifetime $16,000 claimer. One scratch of the number six, Dr. Harlan. And I am liking quite a bit where trainer Antonio Sano is situated here with both the four hookup and the fives aroma. Antonio 
bulk of his operation based here in Miami Garden, so there's no shipping involved from Palm Meadows or, say, from Gulfstream Park, and both horses, to me, just seem very logical and reasonable for 16000 Well, Hookup is, is dropping into this $16,000 non-winners of two uh, race uh, today after bumping at the start. He rallied. He finished fifth that day. It was a really good race. It was a key 16 optional claimer, produced a trio of next out winners, and actually the winner of that race went up to Parks and finished third, I believe, in the grade three Smarty Jones. So certainly showed uh, comes out of a good race. Oh, yeah. There's a roamer on the tickets for all the reasons you mentioned. Sammy Camacho riding in great form, that uncoupled entry. I just went with a speed plane here trying to get a little bit of a price with Royalty Salvatore. Uh, I thought maybe can turn out to be the controlling speed when he turns back to seven-eighths of a mile. Adds blinkers this afternoon. He opened and he surrendered that early two-length lead when he was six behind the five-horse that afternoon. Uh, I just think maybe I can steal it on the front end. And I'm banking it on. I think that maybe this main track is the couple of days we've been here sort of tilted sort of speed. And that yeah. was my thought process. But you're right about hookup and you're right about Zeroma. Those are the two that the race goes through. But Royalty Salvatore may be good. Be off to a five to one start. All right. Blinkers on and uh, the outside post with Paco Lopez. That is a, uh, a potentially attractive uh, duo there or at least offering with a horse who does have the potential to play out as the controlling speed there going seven eights against the compact field in Friday's third. As we flip the script, we're on to race number four. Back to the grass we go as we keep it short at five furlongs. $16,000 three and up made in claimers, uh, which are led by the 0 for 19 dynamic dancer. It's pretty amazing for a horse who's had so many chances and oftentimes has burned a lot of money that I nearly, nearly pulled the trigger with singling dynamic dancer because it's just... I think he's just shown the ability or at least talent up to this point without winning where he's been consistently race after race faster than the competition. But alas, I do want to have Kid Cantharos with Amisael on the ticket for Fernando Abreu just in case Dynamic Dancer just runs to his competition and doesn't deliver that knockout punch. I love today's seventh race, Roddy, because, and I've got some coverage, of course, too deep in the first three legs. The nightcap is insanely tough, and that's leg two again of the Stronic Five. Got my eye on a long shot, who I think is going to really like the turf by Treasure Beach. But that matchup in the seventh race, to me, hands down grabs the spotlight on this opening Friday, where you have the older four-year-old filly whip me into shape, who's just peaking and has been in career form, running against a couple of stake-faced three-year-old fillies who are good, but with that goodness comes some shaky form of late. So I'm curious to see who's going to get the win. And that's, you remember my ticket. You have a single in there. I went four deep in it because I liked everybody in that race. So I didn't want to get beat by anybody. So went a little deep in it. You're absolutely right about race eight. We've been talking about it a couple of days, for a couple of days, because it's a part of the uh, Stronic Five. So we'll see how the race plays out. I didn't use that three. I'm watching. I'm geeking. That's the horse you're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. That's the uh, Joe Aboratons are trained. Uh, Philly by Treasure Beach out of a stormy Atlanta. Atlantic Dam. So sit tight for her. She'll be a price in the nightcap. Not a price, though, to start things out. A big favorite again, the seven dynamic dancer. We'll go back, and this has been a familiar sight for this, uh, and I say this with peace and love, with this cult by Sky Mesa, ranging up, having dead aim, and just not getting it done when the chips are on the table. That may ultimately change today because, again, his body of work against better fields just looks a little stronger than the competition. In a way, Ronnie, this, this meet kind of reminds me of the old aqueduct inner track where some of these maidens who have had a gazillion chances, finally, it's almost because of attrition, they finally just land in the right fields and they wind up winning at short prices and I'm hoping it's as simple as that really and it'll likely be as simple as that with Dynamic Dance. Yeah and I, I mean I put this horse on top of the ticket for, for that reason myself but I had to go a little deeper in there on my ticket because of the 0 for 19 record but we had a horse win I remember last week or a couple of weeks ago that was 0 for something 35 or 25 so you're right they can win at a certain time of the year. I split your two horses with Toss who's uh, dropping a notch day Debuting on the turf, a couple of promising 20 maiden uh, sprints on the main track. Louis Oliveira, Semi Camacho, it's the son of Cantharos, so you would think this hor horse will respond favorably to the turf. And Kid Cantharos, another son of Cantharos, so that was the way I saw my ticket. But I, I wouldn't be shocked at all if Dynamic Dancer won. He's supposed to win today. Right. I mean, he's finally supposed to get that maiden diploma. We'll see if he disappoints again, or at least the chalk players can't argue with the fact that he's been a consistent check getter for Bian Cohn, who's had a uh, pretty good run 
run of late here on the circuit. Race number five is up next as we uh, venture back over to the main track and seven furlongs today on the dirt seems to be a, a popular distance as we do go the uh, seven panels with this $20,000 a two-year-old maiden claimer and all things being equal there is a big bullseye on the back of the four Cyrus who anything close in terms of a speed figure or, or overall performance is going to make this son of Bodie Meister really tough to deny at a very short price. They're adding blinkers today and dropping them to this $20,000 level, stretching out to the distance you mentioned, seven furlongs. Rallied on that sealed sloppy track to finish second. It was against 25 maidens. That was going three quarters of a mile. Stanley Gold just been having a great spring summer. Uh, this is, uh, for, of course, Arendelle Farm homebred. And I thought it was the one to beat. I went with the seven gem one in second. And a little San Diego slugger now mm -hmm. that it's a uh, baseball uh, a playoff season, why not throw San Diego Slugger in there? He's got foundation. Uh, jury's out whether he can run on uh, dirt, of course, but I do think if he can run it all on dirt, he'll be a big uh, player. Let me see that program a sec. I'm curious to see what price Cyrus is. Because Did you think this horse would be an overwhelming uh, favorite? Oh, yeah. he wasn't even favorite on the line. He was second choice. A pretty lukewarm 3-1. to one. We'll see. I thought he was uh, clearly the one to deny, and here's your program back. Well, we'll see how that plays out, but I'm in agreement with you. We both have this horse on top of our ticket okay let's move on to race number six this afternoon sixth race on the program goes at seven and a half furlongs on the uh, turf uh, we've got one scratch of the six captain on the rocks and i think you've heard the phrase or term drop down uh, quite often mm -hmm. on this edition of gulfstream west <laughs> today thus far and that is as far as the favorite goes and reorganize the number seven that is the main appeal with the horse so i think david Braddy and champion equine who owns this cult by data link they're saying you know what probably just never going to be good enough to get the special weight win Let's just put him in for the 50. Yeah, so they drop him down. He returns to the turf. He tracked the pace and faded against those special weight runners going six and a half on the dirt. It's the son of Data Link, and he should be a major part of the pace scenario today. When stretching out of two turns on the grass, I think he's going to be right up there. I went with the number five, and so did you. Cable Channel in second. Really like the breeding on this horse, mm -hmm. being the son of English Channel out of the horse chestnut mare henna, debuting for Armando. So interesting to see how that plays out. Now, the horse that you have in fourth and I have in third cosmic shift debuts on the grass and what I wanted to do was show you stat on Marcus Vitale with horses going from turf dirt to turf dirt to turf two-year-olds maiden claim is only two for 13 15 percent 31 percent in the money but look at the return of investment is why I want to show it so one of those horses was a bomber eight dollars and 98 cents just something to put out there for you guys but the race is reorganizes to be little bit of a breeze here yeah. on this uh, Friday, <laughs> opening Friday of the meet here in Miami Gardens. Those flags waving out there in the infield, but a pretty picture out there with the sun shining as we get ready for the third day of racing of 40 this fall here at our little boutique meet. Let's move on to race number seven, undoubtedly the spotlight race today. Nice little matchup and a quality field in this allowance optional claimer for the Phillies and Mares, who when it comes down to it, pits the older inform with me into shape who's coming out of a loss, but a narrow Narrow defeat and a race will show you back on September 20th when she was beaten by Ladies Island who had Paco and just wired the field got away with uh, a soft pace and was low uh, lone speed and long gone in fact and I I was really encouraged how Whitney in the shape was able to chase on that hard chase and never backed down at all and stayed on so stubbornly and resolutely against a, uh, a quality foe in Ladies Island so does Whitney in the shape pass through this condition because she's been better than ever for Yvonne Belsor or do you have one of the stake faced uh, three year old fillies in the race be it Luz Mimi Princess or your top pick Silver Bay does one of those recapture maybe some of that old form well what I was banking on was the fact that Silver Bay you look at this horse's past performances undefeated in two previous sprints on the Gulfstream West main track I like that includes that victory in the $75,000 juvenile sprint last, no last November mm -hmm. so I thought that was a pretty good performance the old horse for Clorsagel. I put her second because she is two for two at GPW and at times it is a quirky kind of track deeper surface we've talked about that very much sand based and some horses love it some dislike it one word of caution though I'm wondering if she was just really fast and cranked up because she was a two-year-old when she won those races so it's almost a potential double-edged sword does she love GPW 
or was it just a case she was ready to roll and was good for that short period of time? We'll get those answers a bit later on with Silver Bay. And what about Luz Mimi Princess? I clearly see you are really not enamored with her. I have her in fourth. I did add her back on my ticket afterwards. I just thought maybe that this horse could run well. And as I mentioned, uh, right at the top of the show with my Rainbow Six, I went four deep in here because I I'm really had this one as a main puzzle in here. A and let's take a little go back and see what that race from Silver Bay looked like back last November. And you make yep. a good point that it was a two-year-old back then, and he was very precocious back then. Well, she was very precocious, and here it is. Yeah, with Gaffleone getting on this gray filly by Currency Swap, who clearly had a lot of speed. And I do wonder, she might love GPW. Maybe it was a combination. Is she over the top? Did she peak during a two-year-old season? These questions are impossible to answer. She didn't run all that poorly, I guess, looking back to June 6th and the Liza Jane, but there's been a lot of stopping and starting with her on the three-year-old season, but we know the Silver Bay of old, and that's why I put her second while you picked her on top. She could be a force to be reckoned with here at Gulfstream Park West. I just like races like this where you got some quality and you've got some horses who are coming in out of different spots. Well, well how did you feel about Los Mimi Princess, I mean, in this spot? You have it third, and I wasn't sold. I looked down and I said, I don't know if it's the morning line favorite or she not. She is. She is the morning line And I went back and mm -hmm. I had passed over, and then I went back, and when I was putting my ticket together, I said, gee, maybe I missed something, and I added it to the ticket. I don't like losing Gustavo Delgado. Mm -hmm. And Jose Garofalo does a great job. I am a pretty big Gustavo Delgado fan. I don't know what to make of the trainer change and the fact that her last race, and you and I didn't like Bella Vicenza that day. Right. I thought she was vulnerable. Right. I remember that. Right. And and Luz Mimi Princess, we liked her a right. lot. She, I mean, she was beaten 20 lengths, and she hasn't been seen since. And a trainer change, no longer Gustavo. A little, little unsettling there, you and know? That, that was my original thought process. Mm -hmm. All right, let's uh, wrap things up. Race uh, number eight as we uh, cash out uh, Friday's action here. The Rainbow, the late five, the late four, with these uh, two-year-old fillies in a real uh, turf scramble here, uh, going five furlongs and $16,000 made in claiming tags. Where, where do you go, Ronnie? I guess you've got, and I've got in the mix, the two starting points. Uh, spiced Rum Punch, right around happy hour to boot, and the four <laughs> Feature Creature. Yeah, Feature Creature's dropping to the 16 level, going to wear blinkers this afternoon, and broke a step slow, had to steady briefly going up the backstretch. If you go back and look at this race, came out of the gate a little flat-footed, went up, had to steady a little bit, but made a solid move, but was not beating Man, Madam Barrister, who was the even-money favorite mm -hmm. that day. So I just thought off that performance, and it is a wide-open affair. Spiced Rum Punch, I have in second. I just thought this, I, you know, I don't know what this horse is going to really do it five furlongs, but I want to hear about the long shot three who I didn't use on my Stronic 5 ticket. Pretty amazing in hindsight, and hindsight of course always 2020 in this game, but that this filly was two to one in her debut on the dirt. Does that not blow your mind? Yeah, that's amazing that it was two to one. Look, and she obviously did not like the dirt at all. Who knows, maybe she bled, maybe there was a little issue there. All I know is that race was in early August. She's had a little time to regroup, and if she's gonna run it all, it'll likely be A, on the turf, which she gets today, and B, against a field that looks the way this race appears on paper like the Treasure Beach is far more on the turf than the dirt. And as time goes on, we don't really see that many sons or daughters or even grandsons or granddaughters of Stormy Atlantic. He is one of my favorite turf influences of all time, and I get that on the damn side. You get that on the damn side, and, and a good angle, and that's what you have to do with this particular race. So as we mentioned, we're going to get our two tickets together <laughs> for the Stronic Five, and this way I'll have the four and the three on my ticket. The question is, who's Pete Aiello using in the Stronic Five? Uh, we got to call him up and ask him. I got to call upstairs and see what he's doing. Sit tight for that tweet coming up soon, folks. In the meantime, speaking of Pete, he's got those Friday scratches and changes from right here at Gulfstream West. Coming down to the finish with Fort Lauderdale to catch him. They're not going to catch him. Fort Lauderdale, the winner. He went clear with the foul. 